Veterans of America. Visit pva.org. A public service of Paralyzed Veterans of America. This is the sound of a brand new outdoor grill being hurled off a 20-story building. Now a stylish glass coffee table. An electric guitar. These are the things you could enjoy all cast into oblivion. Because when you throw away money on wasted electricity, you throw away everything you could have bought with it. Visit energysavers.gov and get tips on how to save energy and money. Then do things like switch to Energy Star light bulbs or Energy Star appliances, and you could save hundreds of dollars a year. So this doesn't happen to the recliner you've had your eye on. Or this to the treadmill on your wish list. Or this to the shiny new bike your kid's been asking for. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. The war had been going on for two years, and I got the calling. I got the calling to, to join the service and support the boys over there. Thousands of American troops have come home from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, suffering the effects of post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injuries. I never thought that I would have PTSD. I thought that I had enough coping skills. I don't think anybody who goes into combat could ever honestly say that they're not different when they come home. What you take as a simple thing is not so simple for me anymore. I'm going to have my good days and my bad days, and I really don't like those bad days. I would say to those people that are out there, uh, don't brush this aside and don't count us out. Help the USO support these troops and their families. Hear more of their stories at usoinvisiblewounds.org. The wounds are invisible. The stories are real. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Just when you want to get out, they pull you back in, which was a famous movie line. This is Peter Bruno, and I'm back on the air with a new radio program to help you make money. Tune in to Buy, Sell, or Hold, heard daily at 4.30 p.m. Now, here's an offer you can't refuse. Don't miss it. Staying healthy is difficult. What nutritional supplements should you take? What foods are best for you? What health practitioner should you see? You've got health questions? I've got health answers. From heartburn to hemorrhoids, pain to pimples, carpal tunnel to the common cold, gluten to gallbladder, and gingivitis, and all points in between. I'm Dr. Bob Martin. Tune in to my Sunday talk show at 10 o'clock on Talk 1470. WNN. At PeterBrunoMedia.com, you can listen to my Buy, Sell, or Hold radio program streaming online as well as catching up on previous archive radio programs. I do this because there is no better way to build credibility and to convince our radio listeners that our original research truly works in making you money. I challenge you to listen to my radio program with pen and paper in hand and see how accurate our advice can be. Better still, we are offering a two-week risk-free trial to any of our advisory newsletters located at Trading Letters. Dot com. Listen or subscribe today. This is Talk 1470. Talk 1470. WNN. The opinions expressed in the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show, the place to fine-tune your swing, dress for the course, club, or cruise, and get tips on the best places to play and stay at the right price. Vacation or staycation, host Dan Shube, along with his expert co-hosts and guests, will tell you where to go. To play golf and vacation, that is. Now, here's Dan. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show. I'm your host, Dan Shube. And tonight, like we typically do, we're going to talk some golf, we're going to talk some travel, we're going to have some interesting guests who are going to fill us in on some neat stuff. Um, tonight, uh, just in a couple of minutes, we will be talking to a fellow by the name of Scott Wilson, and he is the director of golf for a really cool resort by the name of Stream Song here in the state of Florida. I've spoken about it before. I've had an opportunity to play there, and uh, it's a special kind of place, and we're going to find out a little bit more about it in just a few minutes when we talk to Scott. And a little bit later in the show, we will be talking to Tom Cox. And Tom is the director of sales for Under Armour Eyewear. And Under Armour is one of the hottest brands right now in the world as far as sporting goods, uh, uh, clothing, apparel, sunglasses, etc. 
and we'll find out a little bit more about where they're heading and some of their new products that they have and how they can help you out there on the golf course so that you can uh, see what you're doing and read those greens and uh, not have the sun get in your way while you're doing it. So we'll be uh, doing that in a little bit. Of course, we do have some deals. This uh, week is no different than any other week. I'm always out there doing some research, trying to find the best travel deals for you so that you can travel like I do and get to cool places and not spend a lot of money. This weekend, um, I actually was doing a little bit of traveling. I was up in New York, out on Long Island, and uh, the weather, of course, um, uh, was an issue to some extent. I did have some delays on my JetBlue flight coming back. Typically, they're pretty good, and uh, luckily, I was flying over most of the mess. Uh, of course, um, worried a little bit about the folks in Carolina that are still bailing out, so uh, wishes for them to a speedy um, recovery from those uh, flooding issues that they're still dealing with. And I actually hope to be visiting the, the Charleston area next month. And um, I certainly hope by then that they've gotten everything cleaned up and they're back in business and doing what they do best, which is entertaining travelers like myself and, and all of you, hopefully. Um, but I, I also have some travel news and, and some interesting things and some observations that uh, this is as good a time to talk about as any. Um, I had mentioned I had flown on JetBlue. This weekend, they're one of my favorite carriers, but actually my favorite carrier is who I flew with the previous week, and that is Southwest. And I was reading some information about Southwest that I found to be quite interesting. It seems that they have done such a good job domestically that they feel that they're kind of tapped out as far as the ability to expand and provide new routes and new services and, and grow their business. So it seems that they are now looking more into international flights. And uh, that's a good good thing for all of us because the more competition, especially from what is known as to be typically a discount carrier, will only help us all get to neat places and not have to pay a lot to do it. So uh, I'm all for that. And um, they're, they're going to get started with some new routes uh, very, very soon, I, I believe in just a week or so. They're going to emanate mainly from Houston Hobby, which uh, I have been at recently as well, and, and um They've done a good job renovating there. They've spent a lot of money renovating some of the, the terminal areas for international flights. Um, but what I didn't know was that they also are doing the same thing right down the road here in Fort Lauderdale. And it seems that their international terminal is scheduled to open sometime in 2017. And if it's anything like what they've done in Houston, it's, it's going to be lovely, which I, I believe that Fort Lauderdale Airport can use some uh, new blood and new investment and uh, new routes, uh, a facelift, which you know, they've been working on and, and they're getting there. But for whatever reason, I just have more confidence in Southwest when they, when they put their mind to something like this. They typically do it really well. And, and they've come a really long way. I mean, they're, they're currently flying about uh, 700 jets. And they, they started out really with nothing in this in the state of Texas, a tiny little regional airline. But they're now talking about adding destinations such as uh, San Jose in Costa Rica, Belize City in Belize, Liberia in Costa Rica. Those are coming up in November. And um, it's just going to continue with more and more uh, different destinations like that. And, you know, they're, they're competing against other discount carriers in the area that do have international flights like Spirit. Spirit competes with them here in Fort Lauderdale as well as in Houston, but at, at Bush Airport. And uh, I have to say that, uh, in my opinion, Southwest shouldn't fear that competition. And they have also made mention that they do not fear Spirit. And uh, thank goodness. Um, so, so that's really good news for us here in the Fort Lauderdale area. It's great for our local economy. It's great for anybody who likes to travel. And I wish them the best. And I, I'm, I'm just grateful that they're investing in their infrastructure to serve their uh, traveling public better. So good for them. Kudos to Southwest. Another uh, larger um, company that I do business with frequently while I travel and I've also spoken briefly about this issue in the past on other shows. And that is some of the new technology that hotels are implementing. And um, in this particular case, it's the Hilton brand. And what they are going to be rolling out um, sometime very soon, I believe, is uh, technology whereby more and more of us will be able to check into hotels, especially uh, you need to be a member of their Hilton Honors and you can check in from an app on your phone, and therefore you don't have to wait in line at the at the check-in desk. 
Um, you can pick your room actually from that app so that you, you get a little map and, and you can pick which room it is that you would like to stay in. And, and I've, I've actually tried that already because that was implemented uh, previously. But now what they're doing is is um, they're going to have more and more hotels that will have uh, room keys that are part of your mobile app. So you won't even have to stop and pick up a key. You'll just be able to go ahead and uh, – Use your phone and, and pick your room and, and get into your room. And, and, you know, I, I noticed this when I was recently in, um, their competitor, the JW Marriott in Austin. I did not, uh, use that app and I checked in for a convention a day or so early. So they took very good care of me. But by the next day, just before the convention was beginning, I noticed that there was a huge line of people waiting to check in. Some people had used their mobile app and they had a smaller line at a a different place where they had to pick up their key. But had they had the ability to get into their room without that, they could have avoided all of that mess. And and trust me, nobody after you've traveled uh, by air and, and then you had to get from the airport to the hotel wants to stand in an hour long line to be able to check in and, and get a room key. So I believe that this technology, while it may take some of the personal touch away that, that we kind of enjoy now, we have the opportunity to hopefully speak to a friendly person at that front desk um, to, to save the time and the hassle of having to stand on that line. I, I think this is the kind of technology that's that's a really good thing. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about that uh, in doing my research that I do every week looking for good deals for all of you, I, I stumbled on. It just kind of piqued my curiosity. It's something that I hadn't thought about um, ever, perhaps. Um, it, it's a story about the 10 most popular cities for bachelorette parties in 2015. And many years ago, I was tasked with the project of making several bachelor parties for friends and relatives of mine that were getting married. And it was a tough job, but of course somebody has to do it. So it, it ended up being me. And, and I like to say that I got pretty good at knowing what it was that went into making a fun and, um, different, unusual, unique bachelor party. So oftentimes these would happen in, in rapid succession. A bunch of guys in a, in a group were all getting kind of married at the same time. So we couldn't throw the same kind of party and, uh, I had to be creative and, and do my research. So. But I never really, you know, I, I know that bachelorette parties have become very popular as well over the years. And I really never gave it much thought and I never gave it much thought as to what the differences were. So when I stumbled on this story and, and this was in a, a website, I found this a place called Thumbtack Journal. And I, I, it just to me, it was just very fascinating to, to find out the things that um, the women who are getting married like to do at their bachelorette parties. And first of all. Um, they had a list of the most popular cities for bachelorette parties. And as it turns out, the number one city for bachelorette parties is where I just was two weeks ago. And that's Austin, Texas. And uh, no surprise, I guess, because it, it's a party town and um, lots of great music and places to go out and have a couple of cocktails. So so I get it. Um, a close second right behind Austin was Las Vegas. Um, typically, you would think that that's always going to be number one as far as party towns. And then the rest of the top ten was Chicago, New York, uh, South Beach in Miami, Palm Springs, California, San Diego, Atlanta, New Orleans, and Nashville, Tennessee, which I will be visiting in a week or two. And um, as it turns out, I, I've been to all of these places, and I, I don't know why I'm not the party animal that people might think, and um, I'm just fortunate to go to some of these fun places. But but that was pretty cool. The other part was is the 10 most requested activities that these women like to do at their bachelor parties. And again, I, I had no clue. I, I, I never really gave it much thought. And um, I don't know. So, so here's what the 10 most requested bachelorette party activities are, um, starting with number one, personal chef, two, cooking lessons, party bus rental, massage therapy, event makeup, event photography, limousine rental, pole dancing lessons, boudoir photography, and then for 10th, there was a tie between psychic readings and a bartender. So now I know what goes on at these bachelorette parties. And uh, I, I kind of I'm sad that those days are behind me of, of making the bachelor parties, but they were good times. And, and actually, this past weekend, somebody who was at one of them reminded me about it and uh, uh, fondly remembered some of the fun that, that the guys had as we were all getting together. So uh, those were good times. And um 
obviously uh, destination bachelor and bachelorette parties just like destination weddings are, are really cool and, and fun so if you've got the funds and you can uh, turn it into a little getaway with your friends it's uh, it's that much more fun so uh, there you have it so what we're going to do is we're going to take our first break and um, we're going to then be back with our first guest Scott Wilson the director of golf from Streamsong Resort so stay tuned we'll be back with more of the golf and travel show And we are back in time for a quick message from our sponsor, Labor Finders. If your business needs industrial workers or if you're looking for work, you need to call Labor Finders. Labor Finders places temporary or temporary to hire for opportunities for semi-skilled, skilled or general labor positions such as plumbers, electricians, concrete workers, forklift operators, office clerical and much, much more. Labor Finders has almost 200 offices nationwide. Near here in Boca Raton, they have offices in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and Jupiter. If you need legal, insured, hard workers, or if you want to work hard, call Labor Finders toll-free at 800-864-7749. That's 800-864-7749 or visit laborfinders.com. It's a little bit funny. This feeling inside I'm not one of those who can easily hide I don't have much money But boy, if I did I'd buy a big house Where we both could live If I was a sculptor, huh. And again, we are back, and uh, thanks to Elton John for that song, uh, your song. And um, actually, I, I have fond memories of that song back as a kid, just like I have fond memories of Hello? Stream Song. And um, we, uh, with us to find out a little bit more about Stream Song, one of my favorite resorts, uh, find out a little bit more about these great um, golf courses that they have, as well as the other neat um, events and things that are going on. We've got somebody who knows all about it. That would be the director of golf from Stream Song Resort, Scott Wilson. Scott, are you with us? Yes, I am. How are you tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Well, I have to say that um, it took me a little while before I got up there, but it, it was um, oh, maybe a year or so ago and, and uh, had an opportunity to check out the resort and entertain some clients, and, and we had a great time. So I wanted to share, I mean, I've spoken about your resort on my own, but obviously to go to somebody who's been there and, and lives it every day, we, we can certainly find out a little bit more. So I wanted the listeners to hear it more from you. But before we get to that, um, you know, Stream Song is a unique, uh, a unique property in, a, in an interesting place. And uh, but a wonderful place. But can you tell us a little bit about kind of where you came and, and how you came to hook up at Streamsong? Well, I, I basically have come from California, and uh, I worked for a management company out in California uh, named uh, Kemper Sports, and they uh, knew about Streamsong before it was uh, finished, and I. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, pass through uh, and uh, find my way to Florida with my family and started uh, a few months before we actually opened in December of 2012, which we're almost to that three-year mark. Wow. It's, it, you know, people were talking about it for quite a while before it even opened, and it, it just, I don't know, the, the whole thing was kind of a, a weird um, vibe right from the very start. Not in a bad way, but it was just unusual because... When I first started to hear about the location, it was kind of in an out-of-the-way spot, and then I heard that it's going to be Lynx golf courses, and, and that's unusual in Florida. So it, it was just a lot of weird talk, and in, until you get to see it and experience it, you, you kind of didn't know what to expect. So why don't you explain to us a little bit about how it all began, because I know that there's the backstory is kind of interesting as well. So what, how did this place even become? 
Well, sure. It uh, definitely was uh, uh, in the middle of uh, Florida, and we're really not too far away from Lakeland. And if, if everyone knows where that is, uh, about an hour from Tampa. And, uh, yes, it was uh, used for uh, phosphate mining in the past. And there's a lot of sand out here. It used to be underwater millions of years ago. And uh, I know that caddies will still find shark's teeth to this day. And uh, you'll be outside the property, and it looks like typical Florida. And then once you go in on the entrance road, you'll start to see things develop. You see the lodge on the left as you drive in and a big lake. And then uh, kind of wind around the property of the golf courses. And then all of a sudden, you pop out and you're through these dunes, and it's nothing like the usual or normal flat Florida. And all of a sudden, you're going through these dunes, and you're on the golf course, and it's just beautiful. A lot of exposed sand and uh, wispy grasses, and it's just a, a lot of fun to play golf out here and get away from the city life and we're just uh, very uh, honored to be here and uh, play this type of golf. You said the Lynx golf, and the ball still bounces even in the summer uh, when it's raining, and uh, the greens are fast and firm. Uh, we played six holes tonight for the first time in a while. It's been kind of busy lately, and uh, the ball's releasing to the hole, and it's just uh, something you just don't see in the United States as often as, as you do overseas. And uh, very, very fun, lengthy, bouncy golf. Yeah, I have to say what, what you said about kind of driving up to the place. My experience was similar. You, you know, everything is kind of normal, Florida-like. And then all of a sudden you see this property and either you feel like you've arrived at St. Andrews or the moon or, you know, I don't know. It's just, it just, it hits you and it's just out of place. It just, it just doesn't seem right. And obviously when you're in there encapsulated, it's wonderful. It's, it's like a fantasy land, but it, it just doesn't seem like it belongs there. And the same thing with the lodge. The lodge is, is beautiful, but it, it, it it's a, a modern building and, and it's, you know, a big building in the middle of this open space. And it, it just, it, it's a juxtaposition or it's, it's weird. There's something about it. And, and again, it's, it's wonderful and it's like a fantasy land. But it's just not what anybody would ever expect. It's 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 a total surprise. Well, I'm glad you say that because that's definitely what uh, the folks that started everything wanted. Something different, not your beach club uh, type of golf or hotel or uh, lodge and not the theme parks of Orlando. Um, something that is more old school, more old Florida. And uh, I think that uh, it's been achieved here, and um, we do have another golf course coming here shortly, and it's under construction right now. Wow. And we're just very excited that uh, it's been a success for the first three years, and hopefully onward uh, for years to come. Now, the, the golfers that come, obviously, they, when it comes to the golf, they know what to expect. They're going to come and play some Lynx golf. But I'm sure that you must get some golfers, I mean, some that play overseas and, and some that maybe don't often experience or have never experienced it. What, what kind of a uh, – what do they comment, you know, when they're, when they're done with it? What do they have to say after they've played a golf course that's kind of different from anything that they've ever played before? Well, I'll give you two things. One, uh, Tom Bill came in uh, back when it was just sand and, and grasses and wild, and he said, if you had blindfolded me and dropped me here, it would have been in the 46 to 50 range of states in the U.S. where he was. And, you know, we hear people that have gone to Ireland, to Scotland, they say, there's a little Bally Bunyan in there. There's a little bit of Scotland, uh, some of the courses on the west and east of Scotland. Some say it's more like the sand hills of Nebraska. So we get a variety of comments, and nobody says, oh, I've played this somewhere else. But they, they see little, little glimpses of those courses that they've played, but nothing uh, like this for 36 holes. Now, th this year's U.S. Open was link style golf, and they had some issues. And, and I mean, I understand, especially when you do go overseas, you play link style courses. They're not always um, manicured the way perhaps the U.S. pros like on the tour where they want to, you know, go real low. But I kind of like the combination of having a link style course from kind of tee to green, 
But when you get to the green, or if you keep it in the fairway, which hopefully you do, you do have that beautifully manicured fairway and, and green. I, I don't think you should be penalized when you're on a green. Well, you're right. Uh, and uh, in Florida, you know, we won't have the fescue grasses that will be overseas that aren't as manageable. Um, Rusty Mercer, our superintendent, does a fabulous job of keeping our greens, uh, the May Verde greens, which is the Bermuda, and then uh, the uh, Bermuda 419 throughout the fairways and uh, tees up to the collars. And you can uh, manage those grasses a lot better. And in Florida, uh, you know how uh, most courses are laying low and, and get a lot of uh, spongy type effects. But uh, with the sand that we have here, uh, everything drains well. And we are blessed to have this uh, property and uh, everything is, is rolling forward. You never see a ball with mud on it. And um, the caddy program has been fantastic uh, also that they – they like the walking and uh, and the uh, work that they do. And uh, the people that have come in the wintertime when we're walking only, they definitely like that feel of walking down the fairway, uh, getting rid of the golf cart, and being able to walk off the green to the next tee within 20 yards or so, and there you are in the next hole. So we, we really do appreciate uh, the ground game and uh, ball uh, releasing out here and uh with all the sand it, it just drains as i said yeah the, the other thing about having a caddy program that that i find beneficial is when you're playing a, a relatively difficult or challenging golf course that maybe you've never played before that has a lot of interesting twists and turns the information that a caddy can give you you know I, many of us especially if we don't have a great game we're embarrassed that somebody's watching us or give, giving us pointers or whatever but you truly need to embrace it because it's amazing how much better you play uh, on a course that you've never played before when you've got an expert that's guiding you? You know, we had a group today, actually. It's funny you say that, but uh, the guy said that he um, saved probably seven shots just on the greens because he was looking left to right, let's say, and the caddy was saying, no, it's going to be a little uh, more to your right. And, um, you know, saving him... The, you know, helping him with that working knowledge, and the caddies have been here for so long, they know the greens very well, and, you know, a stroke here, a stroke there, and that's all it takes to, to turn a good round or a bad round into a good round, and that's what they do, and they, you know, the embarrassment part, I understand it, but the golf pros and the caddies, they've seen it all. They've seen the best, they've seen the worst, so uh, they, they kind of take it day to day, and they understand that everyone's going to be different. We have juniors that come out and older folks that uh, maybe can't hit as far as they used to. And as long as we pick the right uh, tee box and get them there, they're going to have a fun time on these type of golf course because the fairways are fairly generous. Uh, and around the greens, you can use your imagination and uh, score pretty well as, as long as those caddies and uh, – you trust the caddies, uh, you're going to make some pot. Yeah, the, the caddies also have some great stories to tell, so there's always quite a few laughs with them, too, and that, that's, I think, part of the job. If, if you can't tell some funny stories, I don't think you could be a caddy, but um, that's, that's, that's always a bonus, I think. Now, now, obviously, you know, we love golf, but, but there are other things to do as well. I know there's like fly fishing and clay shooting and a spa. I, I mean, so whether you like to play golf half the day and do something else the other half, or if you have a spouse, perhaps, that doesn't play, there's plenty of things to do, right? Yes, sir. We have uh, bass fishing on the lake right outside the lodge. Uh, we've got three boats, and uh, Tyler Ramsdale does a fantastic job guiding everyone. And then down the, down the road, about four miles, uh, still on property, uh, we have the sporting clays, and that is a lot of fun with the different stations. And, uh, you know, you go out and um, we've had a challenge event where you got points for golf, fishing and for shooting and uh, add up the points at the end of the day and it, it's a lot of fun especially for the groups that come out and then we also have the spa right on site at, uh, at the lodge so you can kind of soak your worries away uh, after the round or after shooting and uh, fishing and some great dining as well i had a couple of excellent meals there too yes uh we definitely have some good food chef ford uh has a great staff, and uh, they have from seafood to steak to Italian, and then the rooftop bar up at uh, Soda Terra, excuse me, uh, Fragmentary Blue, 
uh, has the best sunsets in the world, right on the lake, and you can't beat it. Yeah, my room actually looked right out on the lake or the stream or whatever it is, and and it was just a beautiful view, sunrise, sunset, whatever. I, I mean, just gorgeous. I, I I couldn't believe I was where I was. I I could have been anywhere in dreamland. You know, it was absolutely. It looked like a watercolor painting.